Look like I put on weight. You look swole. Yeah. <laughs> Should we take a photo somewhere for this? Whatever you want. Guys, what's up? Welcome to Kufar International. Uh, yeah. This guy, if you've never heard of him, is Aaron <laughs> Snyder. Aaron, what's up, man? What's up, everyone? We're gonna do a little, uh, you know what? Get a lot of questions on what pack do I run for elk hunting? And I have several Kufaras, I'm hashtag spoiled. But to be honest, at the end of the day, this is the pack for me for elk hunting. Day or multiple days, like two day, three day, up to 10 days. This is the pack for me. We've set it up just exactly how I run it. And I think it's how you run it as well. Yeah. Probably stole it from you. Yeah, yeah it's identical. I think the, the biggest thing is people sometimes get intimidated when they get on the, the website because it's there's a lot of options. Obviously, we want to make sure you're as comfortable as you can possibly be. So you got options for frame heights and lengths of shoulder straps and belts. But really, if you, if you simplify it, you figure out your torso length or your height and your pant length. So in the case of like Dan and I, for me, I'm a 26 inch frame, Dan Shorter, he's a 24 inch frame. Uh, I'm bigger upper body, that's a polite way I'm saying I'm fat. So I need long shoulder straps, Dan's skinnier, shorter, so he needs short shoulder straps. And then as far as the pack goes, you know, this is standard what we suggest for everyone. That's a large, a medium, and a medium belt pouch, or you wanna do large, medium, and small. Something like that. That way, when you compress the bag for the day, you, you know, you want a low profile pack, you can get fit all the important crap in these three pockets and you don't really even need to get into the main bag. We offer 10,000 uh, options, that is true, but it's not like really you need to confuse yourself with that. These three are the best for this pack. This is where you'll spend majority of your time. You will have all these bags memorized where your stuff is. You don't have to, like other companies, dig around and try to find. Like, you make this like customized, everything's modular, everything's set up for you. To kind of, and man, when you're hunting, I want to like I want to know where my stuff is. Yeah, because I I drop my pack through the day, you know, obviously drop it on the ground. And the reason why this is built the way it is, when you drop it down and take a knee, I'm looking behind it. So right here, I have my water purification, drink mix, things like that, Same snacks here. in the top pack. In the bottom, I have my beanie hat, toilet paper, wet wipes, crap like that. In here, I have my inReach GPS survival pouch. It's all right there and it's there every time. And then that way it's quick access as well. Meaning I'm not unbuckling everything to get the main bag. And it sounds like you do the exact same thing. Where do you throw your trekkers? So trekking poles, you can put them in these yep, that's what I do. pockets here. So I don't use trekking pole. I use actually a, an ice axe with a walking stick. And I actually slide that Is down. It my that's my <laughs> yeah. what, what? I actually slide that down between the pockets and the bag and tee it off. Yeah. Now, the reason why uh, I'm hunting in Colorado in a uh, high country, there's not much water. I don't need an ice axe to, to, to climb the mountain. I'm using that to clear out beds when I'm putting my bivy or my tent or my tarp up. And then seeps, uh, water is a, a problem up high. So if I can basically get a, a drip of water somewhere, I'll dig that out and I'll put a nalgene under that and let it collect over an entire day. And that ice axe helps with that. So that's the big thing, the reason I use that. The other thing too, if you're using a tripod and spotter, you can use that on these outer pockets as well. For me, like, you know, when I'm guiding or I'm doing, you know, hunts that may not need this size of pack, meaning I don't need 6,500 cubic inches. I compress everything down, but I can run up to a 115 spotting scope in, in this pocket, 95, 85, all of them Angle too, right? Yep, angle. And it will fit. Yep, without a problem. I'll run my tripod on the other side. And if I'm day hunting and I don't need a ton of stuff, I can put my 15s and they'll fit in this pocket. It's not an, an, an issue to use this as an all around day pack or multi-day pack. And you can reach the main compartment from both sides with zips, which is super nice. And then the other thing from my system that is super important you guys know is I'm not into backpacking deep and over committing to up but I like to have the option to drop my spike camp bag if it's just multiple bases, yeah. multiple herds. This little guy here fits right inside the hoodlum. This is the camp bag. And so in here, I don't have to think about it. It's everything I would need, pads, bag, tarp, or whatever, water system, for, you know, besides my steri pin and backup aqua tabs is in here. And if I do get to a sweet, sexy spot, I will pull this out of the main compartment, 
drop it in your water, this is where I'm spiking. And then it's a nice little system. So this is another add-on that I would strongly encourage you. When did this come out? Uh, we've had a version of that out for several years. This one is a newer one we just came out with last year. I actually use a dry sack, same principle of what's uh, man's doing. And, and it, it really just depends on, you know, for me, I, that's a little bit heavier, but more durable. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm going in, uh, like you were just talking about, I go in a lot farther but we are stuck in that one spot. And so I'll hang my food in that as well. Um, when I pack animals out, I'll use my dry sack for debone meat. So same basic principle. Dan just uses our, our camp bag. I use a dry sack. When I come out with an animal, that's another big one. Let's, yeah, let's talk about that. So people get really overwhelmed with load shelf, or not overwhelmed, everybody needs a load shelf now, which I've, I've never used one in my life. Um, I've tried it a few times, obviously during testing. With a day pack, I think a load shelf is a fine idea. For me, with a big pack, I just put the animal in the main bag. Well, people are like, well, how do you fit everything in there? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, from here down is soft goods. My clothing, my sleeping bag, whatever. From here to here is deboned meat, which is about 80 pounds anyway, which is much as I'm probably going to want to carry. The top, I put stuff I don't want to squish. So if I've got camera gear or whatever crap like that, my stove, headlamp, whatever goes in here. And then I just take something if I need to and strap it on the outside. I always have room left in my bag. I don't, there's a few different mentalities or thought processes to backpack hunting. There's the ultralight uh, category where you have exactly what you need and exactly the size of bag you need. I don't follow that. I carry a bigger bag than I need so I can put a dead animal in there. So I have extra room like already. planning to kill stuff? I'm planning to kill stuff. What? <laughs> Is that what we're out there for? <laughs> okay. Hashtag conservation. Um, <laughs> so I literally, if I need to, I have a few different dry sacks or super lightweight. If I have to, I'll pile a bunch of stuff in one of those dry sacks and then I just strap it on the outside of the bag and I have no issue. Now, that's hundreds and hundreds of animals I've gotten to pack out that way. It's a proven system I know that works. If you want to use a load shelf, this pack does have one. The negative side to a load shelf is one, if you've got a lot of gear in your main bag, you're extending it away from your back, so you're gonna have to generally hunch forward. The other thing is the time. If if Dan was using a load shelf and I was not, I guarantee I'll beat him down the trail by 25 minutes. Not because Dan doesn't know what he's doing, he's gotta unbuckle everything, open it up like a book, remanufacture the world, reinvent the wheel, strap everything back on, where I literally just stuff stuff in my pack, drop the dry sack in and off the road I go. I'm good and it's way quicker. So that's me personally. The other thing I like about these pack frames is like you can customize these K clips and run your strapping this way. So I came from other manufacturers where I gotta ride a dirt bike in the dark yeah. and I need my bow. I hate putting a bow on a backpack first yeah. and foremost. Just wanna put that on the record. But when you're riding a dirt bike trail, that's pretty nasty in the dark you want your bow as tight and secure as possible. And with other companies, I couldn't get that. With here, I can customize my horizontal strapping to suit my fancy. And check this out right here. Nice little spot for your cam to rest. Yeah. And then you can strap over, snug that in tight, hop on the e-bike, the dirt bike, the four wheeler, whatever. The most important thing for me about, I don't know what you guys have done, I wanna talk about briefly. Oh, small pouch. Nalgene, this is the 1. Point, or this 2.0. 2.0, yeah. This frame is the greatest thing I've ever had on my back. No bullshit. So I'll, I'll talk about the history of of everything at Kafaru. I think it gets forgotten that, that Patrick Smith, who was my uh, boss and who mentored me, and, and Dana Gleason with Mountain Smith, uh, or excuse me, Dana Gleason with um, Dana Design at the time. Patrick owned uh, Mountain Smith, Dana owned uh, Dana Design right. back a long time ago. Yeah. They both sold their companies or whatever, and then uh, Dana sold to K2. Uh, Patrick Mountain Smith took it over. They both retired, sort of, and couldn't retire. Patrick started Kafaru Mystery Ranch, right. uh, was started by Dana. There's nothing that's on the market today within reason that those two men didn't pioneer at one time. When the carbon frame thing came up, there was this pile of carbon frames under the table upstairs, I'll show them to you, of Patrick working on carbon frame in the early 90s. When we talk about why this is so comfortable, there's there's different thought processes to a, a frame. Some companies have straight frames, meaning there's no curvature to this at all. Some companies now have copied us with this curve and everything else. What we wanna do is this curvature, 
wants to match to each specific person's back. In the case of, uh, you know, Dan or myself, and then let's say Dana, she has a huge curvature to her lower back. She's got a ghetto ass. And she needs a big curve, and this lumbar pad will take up that curve. I need less of a curve, so I have less of a bend because I have less room to take up. That curvature and then the different shoulder straps that we offer, those are built, the reason why we have different sizes, because in my case, I'm bigger upper chested. I need a bigger wrap around my upper body. If you took a guy that has shoulder blades like a brown trout and he wore my shoulder straps, they'll be splayed out because he doesn't have a big upper body, which is why a smaller shoulder strap curves different than a larger one. And it's just to match the body. That's one of the reasons why it's confusing for people is they have options. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's so comfortable. As far as the belt, this is the only belt I know of that truly, that wraps the hip right here, mm -hmm. that cups around the hip. Now you look at other uh, companies' belts, and, uh, and if you like other companies' belts, I get it. They're thicker and they're shorter, and it's a pressurized fit. Where ours, it takes pressure, but it's cupping around your hip bone rather than pressurizing into it. Those are some of the things why it's so comfortable, but that's years and years of, you know, Patrick testing. Um, and then obviously now passing on the torch, we are evolving and learning more and more in technology. When I say technology, there was things available today. That quite frankly, weren't this material here, for example, this wasn't available even five years ago. The moment it came out, it tested that it was stronger than what we were using. We upgraded to this, it's called Squadron. Please, nobody copy that. Um, and then, you know, like for us, uh, these staves and cross members, we yep. started off with an arrow going across this. We had seven break in the first six months. That's not actually that many considering we sold several thousand but we wanted to improve. Yeah. So now this, you can't break this. This is a polymer, like a Glock. So the Glock oh. polymer that they use so they can't get caught in security systems. We took that technology, altered it a little bit, and now that's what this cross member is made of so it can't ever break. Mm -hmm. And it's just a slight weight penalty above an arrow. So that's when I say technology and evolving. Yeah, I have the testing that you guys do. Obviously you're in the field a fair amount. And by a fair amount, I mean, there he's in the field more days than he's not. <laughs> Hashtag jealous. But uh, you know, man, all around, this is gonna be a great pack for you guys. Check out that camp bag as well. I wanna finish this video with just making this just the asset of all assets. Top five frequently asked questions from people who trolled the website and have to pick up the phone or email or bug you. Let's, let's answer them real quick. What frame do I need? That number one. The, the frame is super you know, simple. Very few people need a tactical frame. So I just say duplex light. And if you're uncertain of that, ask. When I, meaning if you're carrying a chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah, you might need a tactical frame. If you're hunting, backpacking, get a duplex light frame. Height, that's the next one. If your torso is 18 inches or lower, or let's say you're 5'8 with a 32 inch pant length or lower, get a 24 inch frame. If you're that size and you're 260 pounds, you're gonna need long shoulder straps. If you're that height and 160 pounds, you need short shoulder straps. It walks you through on the website. Uh, and again, you can call in uh, and, and it all has to do with just fit. Probably sounds confusing, but if there was two Dan's here, one Dan is, what do you weigh? 160. One Dan is 160, one Dan is 220. The 160 Dan needs short, short shoulder straps. The 220 Dan or 260 Dan needs long ones. That's because upper body, there's more circumference. More real around. estate. More real estate. Uh, that would be number one is what frame. Okay. Um, the next thing, what size of bag do I need for the potential stay I'm going on? I'm a go big or go home guy. Yes. If if you're staying three days and you're like, I could get away with 3,000 cubic inches, get 5,000. I've never walked down a trail on the way back and said, man, I wish I would have brought a smaller pack but I've definitely walked down that trail and said, I wish I had a bigger pack. It's an extra two ounces in fabric. That's wisdom, that's not knowledge. That's yeah. wisdom right there, folks. Yeah, and, and again, what he said is true. Everything works until it doesn't. And let's say you have a storm coming in, a snowstorm, you got an animal on the ground, you want the ultralight mentality, and you can only get a certain amount down the trail because your pack is so small. Yep. Well, you may not be an ultralight guy that day, have to buck up, carry 150 down the trail or whatever you physically can handle. 
you, you can only strap so much crap on this thing so a bigger bag is, is, is helpful um, as far as that goes. I'd say uh, one of the next questions is gonna be above and beyond you know, fitting and everything else and bag size, what pockets do I need? With the Striker, the Muskeg, Hoodlum, any of the main packs like that, this system is what I suggest. So medium and medium or large and medium on the back. And when you have a snow collar, you can attach a pocket like this one, a medium or a small up here. After that, I suggest if you're a right-handed bow hunter, you're now Gene on this side. And then on this side, a small belt pouch. And if you want to add uh, that pocket that we have on the quiver, for yeah. example, that will fit right here if you want to put your range finder in there. I don't like putting the Nalgene on my left side, especially with the recurve, because the limb hits the bottle, it potentially on a stock and makes noise. And I'm right-handed and it's easier for me to grab it right-handed. So I have it on the right side. Um, and then I can also fit a range finder on there. A lot of guys will double this pocket up on this side. Sure. One of them's a grab bag, calls and everything yeah. else. The other one's a Nalgene bottle pocket. And you could put a range finder in there if you wanted. That's pocket wise, that's what I suggest. Lids is the same thing. Do I need a lid? It's always good to have a lid because you can take that snow collar, obviously not fold it over, use this drawstring, and then put a lid over the top of this. So I suggest for guys to always get a lid if you think you might be pushing the size of your I pack. did get the guide lid and I do highly recommend it. I use the guide lid up until the point I'm going on stocks. Then uh, I use a Bane. It's not the best lid in the world. It kind of works. But that's my final approach pack. So I'll throw that on when I'm making the stock, which is why I use the Bane. The Bane is not as good of a lid but I use it. And your veins probably got water, a can of chew, yeah. and maybe like an inreach? Like yeah. Not I'll much. Just, I'll grab one right here. Okay. Anymore. This is the vein. Yeah, yeah. This right here is a grab it. I can put my shoes in if I don't want to lose them. Right. So somebody just asked me this. I have usually water, a protein bar, water purification, yeah. and some kind of comps. My inreach. Yep. That's pretty much all I have in here. If it thinks, if I think it might rain, I might throw a rain jacket in there. There's not much in this when I leave. Maybe a small eight pounds at the most of crap yeah. will be in this. But again, I can throw this on from my lid. It, it, it buckles straight on as a lid and I can just grab it, throw it on and go and drop my pack. I don't want to go into great detail, but a lot of the ways that I, when I go on a stock, I'll shoot an azimuth to a, a, the animal I'm going after. I'll leave my pack with an orange panel wrapped around it so I can shoot my back asthma to that. But I've got my important stuff in here, so it's not a big deal to, to leave my main bag behind. That's a dope yeah. system. And that also, I mean, that, that could work for elk hunting for sure, as well as obviously mule deer, mountain goats. You yeah. are a mountain goat. In the high country, like for elk, we, we kill elk a lot of times at 12,000 feet plus. We use that literally just to go get water, you Absolutely. know, from camp, stuff Absolutely. like that. So. Man, we talk about two commodities in the back country. It's your time and it's your energy. If you don't have to carry your main pack and go get that water or go make that stock, you might last longer. You might hunt more efficiently. And it's all about your efficiency, your efficacy in the mountains. And uh, these are just good systems. That pretty much covers what I wanted to cover because everyone asks, you know, what do you, what's the best pack for elk hunting? Yeah. Um, but it sounds like you use the hoodlum for other hunts as well. I use the hoodlum for, so I, there's three main packs that I that I use for standard stuff. Okay, here we go. The hoodlum's the primary pack for anything really one night or more. <laughs> I use that anytime I'm backpacking, I use the hoodlum. The striker, when I'm guiding, which is more and more nowadays, or if it's a day hunt in and out where I know the probability of a successful day hunt and I'm gonna have to carry an absurd amount of weight, I use the striker. I'm just gonna have to carry my client's crap. I can put it <laughs> in that stuff, you know, whatever. Yep. So that's the striker. The 357 is the other one I use frequently. That is an amazing glassing pack. I can fit my tripod, spotter, 15s, camera gear. That's kind of my day hunting guiding pack or day hunting pack when Quite honestly, I know we can, if we're antelope hunting, I can get a truck close by. Right. But I'm optics and camera heavy. That 357's, you know, great. But when the rubber meets the road and I'm, I'm backpack hunting, one night to 12 nights, I take the hoodlum. I think the most I've got out of the hoodlum was 13 days and it was getting um, pretty sparse on food that last day, but 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 it will fit that much gear. And I'm a bigger dude, so I do take a big, little bit bigger clothing. How much do you think, you don't do real long, long trips because of where you hunt, it's really not as needed. But I would imagine you'd be able to do 10 to 14 in a bag this size. All day. Relatively easy. Especially with that spike camp bag system that we have. 
which has been super huge for this, my style of not over committing. Gotcha, yeah. And getting in and getting out. Um, guys, if you dig the content, hit the subscribe button. Give us a like, comment below. Aaron has spent more time than anyone I know in the mountains. He killed more animals last week than I'll probably kill this year. So it's just coming down to no nonsense. Check it out. Support Snyder, support Kafaru. Thanks for watching. You guys got a YouTube channel. Check that out. We'll drop a link right there. We'll catch you on the next one.